Hi everyone, this week is Parshas Kedoshim. It is also day 213 of the war with Hamas. Please turn your attention to chapter 19, verse 18. Don't take revenge and don't hold a grudge against your neighbor. Rashi tells us taking revenge means you went to your friend and you asked them to borrow something. And then the next day they came and made a request to borrow something from you. You say, hey, you weren't nice to me yesterday. I'm not going to be nice to you. That's taking revenge. Holding a grudge is you went to your friend and you asked your friend to borrow something and they said no. The next day they came to you. They asked you to borrow something from you. And you said, you know what? I'm not going to be like you. Here, here you go. That's holding a grudge. Either way, these are really difficult things to not do. I want to turn your attention to a beautiful idea in the Sefer Chinach, Mitzvah 241. And he writes over there that the root of this mitzvah, a person should, how can they overcome their sense of justice? I've been wrong and I want to take revenge. I want to give them a taste of their own medicine. Meshor Sheha Mitzvah, the root of the mitzvah, the Sefer Achinach goes on. Sheyeda Adam v'yitain lo at libo, a person should know and place in their heart, ki kol ashe yikro'u mitova ra, that whatever happens to a person, good or bad, hu siba shetova alav me'es Hashem baruch hu. Always comes from God. And even though it may come through the hand of a person, especially when it's not something we like, something that might even be hurtful, a person's first default setting is, that person was only a shliach. This came from Hashem, and I need to reflect why. We learned that from David and Achitofel, when Achitofel did something bad to, to David and hurt David. Before David taking revenge, not taking revenge, David said, hmm, what is Hashem trying to teach me? Again, this is not easy, but it's important to understand that we are not allowed to hold a grudge. We're not allowed to take revenge. And we have to ask ourselves, why did that person cut me off? Why did that person yell at me? Why did that person hurt me? What is Hashem trying to tell me? And again, it works for the good as well. I wanted just to go on to tell you that I heard this idea from Rabbi Moshe Tarragon, and it's a beautiful idea. Pirkei Avos, Chapters of Our Fathers, Chapter 2, uh, Mishnah 8, or Mishnah 9. It's Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, and he has these really great, smart students. And he says, which is a derech yasha that a person should cleave to? What's a, a path of life? And one says, Ayin Tova. Rabbi Eliezer says, Ayin Tova, have a good eye. Rabbi Yeshua says, Chaver Tov, be a good friend. Rabbi Yossi says, Shachin Tov, be a good neighbor. Rabbi Shimon says, Haro Es Anolad, look into the future, don't look at the moment, look down the road. And comes along Rabbi Alazar, and Rabbi Lazar says, Lev Tov. And Rabbi Yochanan Stas, and he says, the words of Rabbi Elazar ben Arach, all those other categories, are contained in having a good heart. The, the idea of cultivating a good heart. There's a great video by uh, Steve Hartman of a boy in Louisiana who saw this man who seemed to be uh, homeless, happened to be a multimillionaire, that this boy went over to him and gave him a, uh, offered him a dollar bill. Only later did the boy realize that this man was very wealthy and the man could not get over that this boy was giving away a dollar that he had earned for good grades to give it to the man. And when the reporter asked this Louisiana boy, said, "Why were you? what were you trying to accomplish by giving this dollar? And he simply said, I wanted some joy. I wanted to, because when you give, you have this sense of happiness. So cultivating a good heart is another way in which we can hopefully fulfill the mitzvah of not taking revenge and of not holding a grudge. If you like what you hear, please pass it on. Shabbat Shalom.